Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are continuing on the set of three children's books with the same illustrator. We're now looking at the first of two that also have the same author. Today we are looking at The Unicorn Who Had No Horn. I believe that's called a horse. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, but not quite phrasing it that way. That was awesome. Um, so the actual title is The Unicorn Who Had No Horn by Margaret Holland and Craig McKee, illustrated by Tammy Starner Eltop. Oh, interesting note. It is the same publisher, Willowis Press. Maybe that's why they all had the same illustrator. Yeah, I was just about to say maybe the illustrator was with that company and it was recommended to these authors. Or simply provided as part of the book deal. Hmm. And another A name. Alexandra was a unicorn who had no horn. All the other unicorns laughed at her. They called her a horse. Well, to be honest, so did I. Shh. When the other unicorns made music with their horns, Alexandra was silent. When the other unicorns went flying... Uh, um... <laughs> this illustration shows unicorns without wings. Yes. When the other unicorns went flying, Alexandra often lost her way. She had no horn to guide her. I wouldn't have thought that would have been the lead problem. Yeah, I'm just like, I don't, what, I'm, huh? Also, Alexandra? Mm -hmm. Seems to be a little awkwardly drawn there. Uh, she's feeling a tad awkward. Also, a difference between the illustration of these unicorns and the ones from the Little Lost Unicorn. The Little Lost Unicorn, the hooves don't have They're that... They're not cloven. Yes. Where in this one, the hooves are cloven. Though, we do have the monochromatic scheme of the shades of gray with golden horns. Just out of curiosity, what's the publishing date for that one? Uh, this is copyright 1985. And the Little Lost Unicorn was published after. The earliest copyright date is 86. Yeah, I think the artist got better. Unicorns can have cloven hooves. Yeah, I'm just saying that the art here looks a little bit awkward compared to the art of this book. Also, we're only on the first page. Yeah. Ooh. And yeah, you missed the dedication. My bad. Going back to the dedication. To Carolyn, Dottie, and all the other crystals on the planet. One day, Alexandra went to see Ursula, the oldest and wisest of the unicorns. Ursula, she said, why don't I have a horn? She looks full grown. I would have been asking that at a much younger age. Yeah. You are not like the other unicorns, Alexandra, explained Ursula. Yours will be a special horn. But what must I do to have this special horn, asked Alexandra. You must go on a long journey to find a magic crystal. The crystal will help you grow your horn, said Ursula. Where do I go to find my crystal? asked Alexandra. I cannot tell you. All I know is that it is far, far away, and you must go alone. You will find the help you need along the way, said Ursula. None of the other unicorns could tell Alexandra which way to go to find her crystal. It could be anywhere, they said. So Alexandra began her journey without knowing where to go. She flew and flew. With no horn to guide her, she soon lost her way. I think they mean the word flew here as in going really fast, even though they have her pretty high off the ground. No, I'm pretty sure this is how unicorns fly in this book. Remember how they said the unicorns fly? Yeah. And get lost? And she gets lost because she doesn't have a horn? Hmm. Also, a cat's joined us. <laughs> Everyone, say welcome to the Kit Kat. After many hours, Alexandra decided to land and ask for help. She walked through the forest. Suddenly, an acorn dropped from a tree and hit her on the head. Two squirrels rushed down to get the acorn. Then they rushed away. I see more than one acorn. I see lots of acorns. I also see a bunny and lots of squirrels. I see two squirrels. It says two squirrels. Oh, doesn't it change anything about the bunny. Nope. Hello, said Alexandra. You certainly are in a hurry. One of the squirrels stopped. 
We have no time to waste, said the squirrel. Our winter supply of acorns has disappeared. And there's that bunny in the background again. I wonder. Yeah. Just, yeah. Easter Bunny? Is that you? Perhaps I can help you. You can ride on my back and we can find lots of acorns, said Alexandra. That wouldn't help. We can run as fast as a horse, said the squirrel. The squirrel knows this how? I'm not a horse. I'm a unicorn, said Alexandra. You're no unicorn. You don't have a horn, the squirrel said. I am a unicorn, said Alexandra. I may not have a horn, but I do fly. Then let's go, said the squirrels, and they jumped onto Alexandra's back. Alexandra helped the squirrels gather many acorns. They don't just gather acorns, but yeah. Yes? Apparently she would like a squirrel. Apparently. When the squirrels had enough nuts for the winter, they stopped. Now I need your help, said Alexandra. Okay, you didn't make it clear that this was going to be a tit-for-tat item. Ursula said you would find the help you needed along the way, but you don't help someone with the expectation of getting something in return. Altruism. Is a thing. I'm lost. I'm looking for a magic crystal to help me grow my horn, and I don't know where to go. Grandfather Tree will know, said the squirrels. All you have to do is fly until you find the tallest tree in the forest. That is Grandfather Tree. Alexandra flew until she came to the tallest tree in the forest. You must be Grandfather Tree, said Alexandra. Yes, I'm the oldest, wisest, and tallest tree in the forest. Humble much? But right now, I'm also the loneliest. Why is that? asked Alexandra. All the birds think I am too old. They don't want to build their nests in an old tree, he said. Maybe I could help you, said Alexandra. There must be some birds who would like to live with you. There may be, said Grandfather Tree, but they are all too far away. Let me try to find them, said Alexandra. I can fly. Horses can't fly, said Grandfather Tree. I'm not a horse. I'm a unicorn, Alexandra said sadly. Then she flew away. Also, even if she's a horse, she's not a tree. She has more mobility than you. I was also suddenly thinking about the theme song to Mr. Ed. Whoa. That's a nice image. Two-page spread. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you read it, then I'll describe it. Alexandra flew in wider and wider circles around Grandfather Tree. At last, she saw two owls standing on a tree stump. Alexandra flew down to them. Huh. I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe this, but I was thinking that she was creating some type of whirlwind to catch birds because of the way they illustrated the um, motion marks, but it was actually just them illustrating that she was going in a wider and wider circle. Yes, because if you look, you have smaller circle. well, they're more of ovals. You have smaller ovals, and then larger and larger until yeah. they come out to where she's drawn. That's why I was thinking it was kind of a whirlwind thing, because it looked like it was going down, which is right, but... Where did you come from, and what are you? asked one of the owls. I'm a unicorn, said Alexandra. But you don't have a horn. You can't be a unicorn, the owl said. They're just going to rub that in, grind that salt into the wound. Alexandra started to cry. I am a unicorn. I just don't have my horn yet. I'm looking for a special crystal that will help me grow my horn. And I promised Grandfather Tree that I would find some birds to live with him. Where do you live? She asked. Uh, it's quite a transition there. Yeah, because I suddenly thought, stop. Where do you live? Because <laughs> it doesn't really flow. Our home is gone. We lived in a tree that was struck by lightning. All that is left is the stump, said the owl. Grandfather Tree would like to have you live with him, said Alexandra. We're too old to fly such a long way, said the owl. You don't even know how far it is. And we're too tired to build a new nest, said the other owl. Well, where else are you going to sleep? Who knows? I can help you, said Alexandra. I can fly you to Grandfather Tree and help you build your home. I will give you some of my mane to make your new home soft and warm, said Alexandra. Would you? asked the owls. Of course, said Alexandra. Fly up onto my back and we'll be off. And away they went. Uh-huh. Yeah. Illustrations are quite nice once you get past the first couple of pages. Also, the world's only known picture of two owls riding a hornless unicorn. Yes, Gravity Falls. Nice reference.
Grandfather Tree was delighted to have the owls live with him. The owls were happy to have a new warm home. Now I have a question for you, Grandfather Tree, said Alexandra. I am looking for a crystal to help me grow my horn. Can you tell me where to find one? She asked. Once long ago, said Grandfather Tree, I heard a story about a valley of crystals. This crystal valley is very far away, he said. Which way is it? asked Alexandra. I don't know, said Grandfather Tree. He's a tree. He hasn't exactly gone anywhere. Also, does he have a sense of direction? Well, he has a sense of gender. He is Grandfather Tree. Hmm. We know how to find the Crystal Valley, hooted the owls. All you have to do is follow the North Star until you see the crystals sparkling in the starlight. Oh, thank you very much, cried Alexandra as she flew away. Mm -hmm. We're finding a lot to talk about in this book. Alexandra followed the North Star all night. Just as the stars were beginning to fade, she saw the Crystal Valley. I think I see the Crystal Valley too. I think I see the crystal value too. Va I think I see the crystal value. Value. <laughs> crystal value. Cri crystal value. Crystal value. I think I also see the crystal va valley. Valley, 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 girl. Okay. I think I also see the valley too. I, al I think I also see the crystal valley too. Also in two. Okay. You, you really see it. Meow. <laughs> Alexandra landed in the middle of the valley. She was surrounded by beautiful crystals of all shapes and sizes. When the sun came up, the crystals began to sparkle in the sunlight. My crystal must be here somewhere, thought Alexandra. But how will I know which one is for me? I have a feeling it's going to be pretty obvious. You know, just the way these stories work. Alexandra walked slowly around the valley. She looked carefully at all the different crystals. Some were tall, some were short. And some didn't have horns, I mean. You know I'm sensitive about my height. <laughs> Inside joke. Check. Alexandra stopped in front of the largest crystal in the valley. Oh, great crystal. Is my crystal here in your valley? She asked. Apparently everything can talk. Yes, your crystal is here, said the great crystal. Will you give it to me? Asked Alexandra. That was kind of not polite. You know, would you please, or... Mm -hmm. May I have it? Or would you point me in the general direction, please? Mm-hmm. But no. Will you give it to me? Well, apparently it's already hers, since she's asking for my crystal. And the great crystal says, your crystal is here. Mm -hmm. So apparently both sides know that the crystal is hers, even though they've never met. Ah. You must find it for yourself. But you may not take it from the valley unless you leave something in its place, the great crystal told her. She didn't ask where was it. She just asked if it was there and would the crystal give it to her. Mm -hmm. She didn't ask where, but apparently she must find it. And apparently she has to trade for it. Ah, I hate fetch quests. Alexandra lowered her head and walked away sadly. I have nothing to give in return for my crystal, thought Alexandra. I've come all this way for nothing. Alexandra began to cry. She didn't notice that where each tear fell... A beautiful flower sprang up. She was crying on another page. Let me go back. Was there a flower there? Nope, no flower. Mm, yep, nothing. Suddenly, she heard a small, tinkling voice. What beautiful flowers! We've wanted flowers in our valley for a long time, and now you have given them to us. Alexandra looked down and saw a small, shining crystal. You're my crystal, aren't you? she asked. Yes, and I'm ready to leave the valley with you, said the crystal. You are? asked Alexandra. How do I pick you up? You don't need to, said the crystal. Rub your forehead against me, and I'll always be with you. Why does that sound like it would hurt? Reasons. Alexandra touched the crystal with her forehead. She felt a funny tingle. Something was happening. The crystal stuck to Alexandra's forehead, began to grow. It grew longer and longer. Alexandra was growing a beautiful crystal horn. It sounds like a symbiotic relationship. Let's just hope it doesn't go too far down into her brain. Yeah, and so is the crystal now just her horn? Or does she get to hear this little voice for the rest of her life? Oops. Oof. Oof. Because you're merging a sentient creature to another sentient, sentient creature. creature. So, kind of like Slow King. Also Slowbro, both mm -hmm. of them. Yes. Pokemon Evolution. Weird. 
Alexandra thanked all the crystals in the valley. She only interacted with two, but okay, you should say thank you. Now she had her crystal horn to guide her. And all the way home, she made beautiful music with her magical crystal horn. And except for the sparkliness, it looks a lot like Ursula's horn. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it does. Alexandra seems to be smiling in this picture. Yes, a very human smile. Which I don't know if horses can do. Hmm. Haven't been around them enough in a while. One of my neighbors used to own one. So? What you think? Much more uh, readable than the little lost unicorn. Though I think that you are correct that the artist made some improvements in their style and overall skill level between this book and The Little Lost Unicorn. I think they even made improvements as they drew this book. Yes, the, the later sketches are much better than the earlier ones. I would call these drawings. Sketches implies that they're rough and... I've been looking at your work too much lately. Ouch! Not ouch, you've mainly been doing sketches lately. Because they only... They're easy, only take about a half an hour. But lately... Oh, look, this sketch will take a half an hour. Hour and a half later. Why? Why? And this has been The Unicorn Who Had No Horn by Margaret Holland and Craig McKee, illustrated by Tammy Starner Altop. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please check out other entries in the Embers Reading Room lineup or check out other videos on our channel. If you would like to check out this book for yourself, please look below for an Amazon link. We will provide one if the book is still in print. If you'd like to go shopping for some other stuff, we have a link to the company Ebates, who provides cash rebates for shopping. Amazon and Ebates are not affiliated with or in any way sponsors of Ember's Reading Room or any content on the Lux Analysis channel. But right now, I am also the loneliness. I am also the lonely... <coughs> <laughs> Shut up, you. <laughs> I, I'm the one to talk. But right now, I'm also the loneliest. One more time. I'm also the loneliest. <laughs>